In the arms of an angel. Every year, thousands of pumpkins are killed by frost in the field in New England. Yes, the uh, frost last night finished off all these leaves. So, all is not lost though. I did a bunch of searches on different uh, cooperative extension websites, which uh, that's usually the local colleges uh, get together and work with agriculture and they put together information for people. A lot of very useful stuff there. Highly recommend using them and supporting them. Um, anyway, uh, the consensus, especially for the Northeast, is that once you do get a frost and it kills off the leaves, um, even though these stems are upright right now on the leaves, um, really a lot of the energy is getting pulled back and there's really no point to keeping the pumpkins on. Um, the good news is if you can get them enough sun and keep the pumpkins themselves from freezing, um, with enough time, they will finish yellowing. As long as the skins are hard, um, these do have a good hollow sound. That's good news. And there is a test that you can do. Even that one sounds good with your fingernail. If you, a little bit of pressure, if it doesn't scratch off the flesh, then it should be, the rind should harden. Um, so I should be able to get most of these you know, still get them orange. As far as how long they'll last, that's a different story. Um, because the, the gourd itself still needs to really harden for it to last a long time. So that's more pertinent to squash if you're going to be storing squash over the winter. Um, really, these are going to be just decorative. So as long as they don't start, you know, rotting before Halloween, I'm fine with them. Um, but... Yeah, apparently if you want to get them to harden, you got to keep them, after you cut them, try to keep them in a place that's like above 80 degrees and above 80% humidity. And then once they've hardened, then you can store them in a cool place for a while. Um, so definitely some of the tomatoes got hit too at the tops. So we may take these off and keep them as green tomatoes, see if we can get them to force ripen. Maybe, maybe not. Um, there might still be some life left in the zucchini, the um, leaves closer in are still doing okay and that cucumber back there is doing all right as well as this one over by the ground so there's a chance some of this now the pumpkins in the back um, again those leaves there's still a good bunch that are totally protected probably from being underneath the trees and stuff you can see that stone bench in the middle there. There's a couple of big pumpkins back there. So I may keep those, but the plan for today is all of these guys that are clearly on vines that are, you know, hit hard, I'm going to go ahead and cut those off. And for the time being, I'll probably keep them out in the middle of the yard somewhere here so they get as much sun. Uh, maybe I'll put them on the back deck. The problem now is that we're going to have another frost tonight. So I'm going to have to bring them inside just for tonight. And then I guess I can leave them outside after that point. It's going to be, you know, a warm, sunny week. And the nighttime temperatures are going to get above freezing or stay above freezing. The only question is, is critters now. If I leave pumpkins out there, you know, the raccoons or the chingmunks might figure that I'm leaving them out a nice table of uh, good stuff to chew on. But yeah, so there is the... Uh, the other end of the surprise pumpkin patch of 2020 in Marlow, New Hampshire. They definitely look sad when they're killed off and those leaves are like that, but it was a pleasant surprise. And I'm going to still just try to make the best of it and try to, you know, not get the pumpkins to market, but get them to orange and enjoyment, you know, from start to finish. So we'll see how that works.